Well, welcome to another edition of Talking Sports and Fitness with Zeke. I'm Zeke, sometimes known as Mike Zielinski. My uh, guest today is Reading Fight and Fills reliever Austin Davis. Welcome, Austin. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, Austin is uh, one of those classic late bloomer stories. Uh, in Scottsdale's Desert Mountain High School, uh, you hardly pitched one year, right? Yeah. Uh, your junior year. Uh, you pitched just one and one. You weren't hurt or anything. One and one th third innings or no, nope, just learning how my body worked. Um, you know, I pitched a lot in inter squad games yeah. and at bullpens and stuff. And um, we had a really good pitching coach, John Webb, and he worked with me on uh, just figuring out how to work my body so that when I came into my senior year, I you know had a good shot to go to college. Now you're uh, you're six four now. Were you six four then? Yeah, six four, but you know, like a buck seventy. Got you know elbows and knees going all over the place, like. Mike Drago said. Yeah, the, the thing is then, uh, but you had good enough senior year, I guess because of fastball. People love left-handers, tall left-handers with fastball. You had some velocity. So you wound up at Cal State uh, Fullerton. Bakersfield. Oh, uh, Bakers. I'm sorry. And uh, Bakersfield. And uh, you hardly pitched your freshman year, and you didn't even make your te the team the sophomore year, right? Yeah, yeah. Freshman year, um, you know, I got 26 innings, 26 and a third innings. So got got a couple starts, got some good work, and then, you know, same thing sophomore year, pitching inner squads and just learned how to, you know, c control the fastball, use off speed, and get ready for my junior year. And after that, obviously, click. You were drafted uh, in the 12th round by the Phillies, and uh, you've been bringing up some strikeouts. The uh, and so far as we tape, you're three and one this year with a 3.09 ERA. So you've been well with Reading. Um, and last year you had a rough season because I guess you're out to July with a herniated disc. Was that in your back? Yeah, herniated disc in my back. Um, just suffered that in the uh, off season coming into spring, and so rehab basically from day one of spring until July 3rd. And any after effects now or? Uh, no, fully clear, good to go. Joe Roush and the whole team there was awesome. They got me, they didn't let me rush, they didn't let me come back too early. They just said, let's get this fixed, and then they didn't go back and pitch. So so you actually had the surgery? Uh, no, just two injections. So okay. two oh, injections, good. got it ready to go, make sure that there's no risk of re-injury, and then they let me come back and pitch. So you your fastball touches like 96 miles an hour, right? Yeah, yeah. And you, uh, if you've added some pitches, what have you pitches have you added since you've been a professional? Um, you know, since I've been a professional, I've been really working on locking down that slider as a lefty coming out of the bullpen. You know, sliders. Yeah. I feel yeah. like the most important thing, and then you use the changeup as you need it. But commanding the fastball, commanding the slider, do what I want it to do, and go from there. And uh, your changeup too, right? Yeah. Uh, with your kind of velocity, a changeup uh, is a killer pitch. At time. Right. Yeah. Do uh, you think your velocity could even increase as you? Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, because uh, you're still a little thin. What do you weigh now? I'm about two thirty. Two thirty. Yeah. Well, you wear it well. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you. You want to stay two thirty? Yeah. Two, I feel like two thirty is a good weight. I came in my uh, rookie season at like two forty five, two fifty. Oh, you were that big? Yeah. yeah. It was a little uh, too big, and then kind of I've been ranging back and forth, and I feel like two thirty, two thirty five is a, a good weight. Well, you know. I've, uh, reminds me of the Mets Noah Syndergaard, who really ball. He was big, 240 to begin with, and in the off season, he, through weightlifting, he really built himself up. He mm -hmm. was a monster, and then he pulled a tore a lat muscle, and he's been on the shelf. Exactly. So you want to keep yourself, you know, a good range. Your arm can take the, you know, the force you put on it all season, but you also want to be strong. So it's balance. And uh, you've never really, really had any hard uh, arm troubles or anything like that. Nope, I'm unlucky with that. So. Tell me about your mindset. Uh, you're pretty good with uh, handling pressure because the late blooming factor, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I've always been in a position where, you know, I'm fine for a spot on a team. And, um, you know, there's always been these points in my career where if I don't have a good senior season, then, you know, I might be done. And if I don't, you know, show something junior year, then, you know, I could be done after my senior year of college. So, um, you know, my mindset is just go out there, make every single pitch and try and be as good as you can, and results will take care of themselves. Well, do you, you ever pinch yourself thinking, you're, here was the guy who was fortunate to make the team sometime, and now you're a bona fide major league prospect? Yeah, you know, I, I don't get too much too much into that stuff. Um, you know, the whole prospect, not prospect thing, I, I just want to, you know, be the best I can. I know the Phillies, you know, could always use left-handed pitching, and I'm going to be the best left-handed pitcher I can in hopes that uh, I get there. 
Do you think there's a better opportunities to move up being a relief pitcher than, say, a starter? You know, I think it can be easier because there's always spots to fill. I feel like the bullpen is more of like a rotating door than a starter. I think, um, you know, I see Brandon Liebrand, and he's been great all season. He's up in AAA pitching really well. And, you know, they're going to make sure he's ready when he goes into the big leagues. And, you know, it's the same with the relievers, but sometimes they need someone to go up. So, Yeah, relief pitching is so specialized now. Do you basically do one inning at a time? Do you sometimes stretch it too? Yeah, one inning, two innings. You know, when I was down in Clearwater this season, I was going – three plus um, so I can you know do whatever they need me to do that's right you started the season Clearwater right yep uh, it's probably reminds you of Clearwater weather today being this hot yeah a little hot a <laughs> little humid so nothing I haven't experienced uh, so your mindset too at being a relief pitcher you must get very engaged in every game because mm -hmm. knowing you could be in there right yeah yeah it's interesting we were just talking about it yesterday the role of a you know, bullpen guys, you know, the starters go out there, they try and give the team a chance to win. And if we're winning, you want to make sure you hold on to that for them. And if we're not, you want to keep them close enough to where the offense can bring us back in the game. So how are starters like if you have a little bit of a rough outing, not that you've had much here, uh, go into the clubhouse after the game. Do they ever give you any grief that, you know, what were no. you doing out there? No, no. Everybody's no. pretty professional. Everyone's really professional. Yeah. Um, we got a really good group of guys here. Really, um, it's a young team, but in terms of mentality, I think we're pretty mature. Um, and everyone kind of picks each other up. Uh, Tom Wendell and I, you know, he's been here for three years, so I try and hang out with him as much as I can, learn from him, and um, we play off each other well. And, you know, it's nice to watch him go out there and pitch as a left handed reliever, too. What do you do on all those long bus rides in the Eastern Leg? Oh, man. Sleep. Sleep a lot. Uh, I'm a big reader, so I'm reading, you know, a few books right now. And um, what are yeah. you reading? Uh, it's a book called Economic Hitman. Um, so it's just about, uh, you know, the history of this guy's life and you going to different countries and learning about, you know, how to be an economic hitman. So you have to read to learn more. You're a ball player, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> That's interesting. Do you, feel, do you see a little bit difference in uh, off-field interest among the guys who went to college and the guys who came right out of high school? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, uh, you know, the college guys went to college for three, four years, and, um, you know, you learn a lot more. But, you know, the guys that came out of high school, too, are also, you know, smart guys. But, you know, I think the interests sometimes different, especially with, you know, the Latin American guys, too. They yeah, just yeah. completely different culture. So, What do you think of playing in Reading? I love Reading. I think it's the, you know, one of the coolest stadiums I've ever played at. You know, I was telling my fiance the other day that, you know, if I was to invite anyone to come play at one of the stadiums that I've played at, this would probably be the one. So this is a, they call it America's classic ballpark, and it really is. Yeah. And uh, I'm old enough to remember when this place was falling apart years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, but the, the transformation over the decades has been just phenomenal. I mean, there are people who travel. Uh, they, you know, major league itineraries. Some people mm -hmm. will include Reading on their stop just to check yeah, that place out. That's awesome. I mean, the crowds are always great, especially on the weekends. Packed stands, like fans get into it. You got the post game concerts, which are cool, and just a cool, like, more of like a family atmosphere than most stadiums are. But I know as much as you like pitching in Reading, uh, you'll love Allentown, right? And then oh, and yeah. possibly Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, being the Phillies bullpen pitching up there. So. Well, your pitching coach thinks you might have a shot, so because of your velocity and being left-handed. So, uh, best of luck to you. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. And uh, congratulations on a, a metamorphosis that's just amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you. All right. For now, this is Zeke saying goodbye. These community stories are made possible in part by BCTV, Susie Ray Design, Queen City Family Restaurant, Lamar Advertising, Heidelberg Family Restaurant, Reading Air, Lions and Hole, Peanut Bar, and Kutztown University.